Uh, Samuel Garay, uh, senior at CSUN, graduating this uh, spring. Uh, long time fan, first time caller. Uh, <laughs> so the question that I have for you is... Long time, uh, first time. <laughs> Uh, what brand do you most admire? Why and how do they influence your work? Why does that matter to you? Curious. To see where you're getting your own thought process from and see how that's leading to and then also seeing your work ethic. So for me it would be Beyonce even though that's technically a person. To me it's a brand because... She's a brand. She, yeah, she's a brand. She's a hard worker and uh, there's like this huge like meme and like Beyonce has the same amount of hours in the day as you so it kind of like kicks you in the ass and says work harder because if she has the same amount of hours so do you and you have more work to do okay perfect thank you very much so brand you guys all have a brand you know that do you all know that you have a brand now a lot of people think I, I don't have a brand I haven't designed my logo yet your logo is not your brand okay um, we all have a certain idea about, what's your name? She she? She she we all have an idea about what she stands for. If she works hard, if she cares about what she looks like. Uh, everything that she does, we have a, an idea. And a brand is just a person's gut feeling about a person, product, or service. That's all it is. So you all have a brand. Now you've been not managing your brand really well, maybe. So you need to start managing your brand. Okay, I have a brand too. Some people say I'm a little sardonic, a little acerbic, a little sarcastic. I've got a little bit of an edge, okay? So when people first meet me in this kind of context and they don't know anything else about me and I start saying what I say, they get weird. Like when I walk into CSUN and I start saying, you guys need to learn to work harder. People are, whoa, whoa, whoa. But at Art Center where I used to teach, that's what they come to expect. So if I throw them a softball, they're like, wait a minute. Is that all you have to say? I'm like, no, I was just getting warmed up, baby. <laughs> Hold on a second. Let me get my butcher knife out and the scalpel and all my tools and the drill. Now we'll get to work. This is what they expect. So you all have a brand. You need to start to learn to manage it. Okay? Everything that you do and say impact the perception that people have on your brand. Okay, so brands that you admire, you, you admire Beyonce, super famous, living the life and working really hard for that life. Turns out a lot of successful people and companies work really hard. That is a common trait, okay? Brands that I admire. What brands do you think I admire? <laughs> and there's different brands that I like, but I have to think about that a little bit. Apple, maybe? I love Apple. Okay. Why do we love Apple? Because they're like the top of the top, the uh, corn de la blue, or whatever they say. <laughs> oh, the cream say? of the crop. The cream. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. We're going to have the subtitle on that. Corn de blue. <laughs> Short words. <laughs> Sack de blue. Uh, uh, Aaron, he speaks French. Keep what it in. What the hell did he just say? <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> just a, what, what did he say? All right, let's not bust out French terms. <laughs> We're not sure we know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. All right, let's talk about Apple as a brand. Yes. All right, let's, let's do the Apple brand. Nike. I think it's like that, right? Okay. Let's say Apple. Okay, what does Apple stand for? What do we think of them as a brand? Not what they make, what they stand for. What are their values? Think different. Okay, <laughs> sure. What does that mean to you? I feel like they would be the front line of new technology. Most of the time they are. Um, I feel like- So there's innovation? Innovation in there. Okay. From here on out, all your answers have to be in French. Oh. Mm. <laughs> 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 all right, let's keep going. Uh, I also feel like they, they're not cheap because even in Black Friday they don't have sales so I feel like they have a sense of you know value. Well there's the other word that's not cheap it's called premium right? Mm -hmm. Some, somebody might say they, they have a very charismatic brand. Charismatic. Let me make sure I spell that. Yeah? Yeah. 
And you could say lots of other words. Yes. Um, there is a reason why their products appeal to designers and artists. Why is that? Because Adobe works in it well. Well, besides that. Oh. It, okay, I'll just say it works well. They've made a deliberate move to play to you. Yes, and they Why design well. Um, I had this professor once say that even the little things matter. So if like you undo like the telephone or something like that, everything inside the phone is designed perfectly. So they're even thinking about the person who's gonna see inside the phone and like fix the phone. That's even designed. Okay. Uh, I think that's like no detail is too small. And that appeals to a certain kind of person, right? Yes. Like an OCD kind of person. <laughs> but I think they're deliberately targeting and championing people that are in the creative space because they're the ones who go and change the world through art, through music, through literature, and they're creative beings. So they say, we believe what you believe. So the thing is, we, we trust people who believe what we believe. This is from Simon Sinek's book, Start With Why. Okay? You understand that, you guys? Yeah. And he goes on to demonstrate. Have you guys seen his TED Talk or his lecture on 99 Designs? You guys know who Simon Sinek is? Simon Sinek? Well, we'll include the link so you guys can check it out later. You definitely need to go check out his talk and better, you know, watch his talk and then read the book. He says, look, I'll prove it to you right now. I'll prove it to you that we trust people who believe what we believe more than people that are qualified for the job. Let that kind of resonate a little bit and kind of just marinate inside your brain, okay? Now, he says that what's the most valuable thing we have? What's our most valuable resource? And he says our children, okay? So if we have a kid and we're looking for a babysitter, who are we more likely to hire? Sally, who is 16 years old, grew up in the neighborhood, we saw her grow up, we know her parents, she lives in the community, or Mary, a nanny from the UK, professional qualifications, went to this school, went to that, who are we more likely to trust? Well, we, it's a rhetorical question. You don't have to, you see what I'm saying? So we are gonna bring the person in from the neighborhood because we know her. She's not some creepo. The problem with Mary is we just don't know. We gotta look into her records. We gotta do due diligence. But Mary is ultimately way more qualified than Sally. Sally's gonna be texting with her friends on Snapchat. That's what's going to be going on. And if the kid gets hurt, she doesn't know CPR. She doesn't know first aid. You see what I'm saying? So this is about understanding trusting people who believe what we believe. So it's very important, too, that you communicate what you believe. This gets back into your portfolio. Most people just show the work. We don't talk about what we believe in. And that's very hard for you to do. Now, you guys are just out of school or not yet, you're, you're not even out of school yet, and so you're gonna be focused on the work. But if you want us to get into real branding, now you have to start thinking about what you stand for. Now, one brilliant commercial to study and analyze and break down is uh, the one where they launched the Think Different campaign. When he talks about, here's to the crazies, and you see Albert Einstein, uh, the troublemakers, and you see Martin Luther King Jr. The Rebels, Dylan, and he goes on and on and on. He tells you who we're for and what we believe in. Because the ones that are crazy enough to change the world are the ones that actually do. It resonates within your soul. It's like, that speaks to me. They believe what I believe. That's what makes them special. I, I want to ask you uh, about uh, character. Character. Right. So yes, sir. how do you demonstrate character, right? Does that... We know how important character is, right? And how do you demonstrate do that? And, and where does that fit in with the context of design? Okay. This is perfect. I love character. Character. You guys know what character means? What's character? You want to say something? As far as character? Sure, but get the mic closer to your face. Okay. Thank you. As far as character, I think it's, what, it's who you are and what you do and demonstrate to other people. It's what your character is. Because what people see... And how, and how you react and how you, what you do to other, that's your character. I think that's what it represents. I like that. 
So I'm going to draw um, a human head, or my approximation of a human head, OK? There's your head right there. So here's your eyes. OK? There's your head. OK. Now, there's this idea. Um, I think it's, I want to say Freud, that there's different parts to our psyche. OK? And I, I, I'm, I didn't study psychology, so I'm not going to pretend to tell you what all those parts are. But if there's a fractured sense of self, we are not whole. When the different parts of our brain are fighting with each other and we think and what we say and what we do are not the same or we're out of harmony. Okay? Just want you to think about that. And he goes on to talk about how there are parts of us that we hate. If you guys search in your mind right now, there are parts of you that you're like, if anybody found out, I, 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 I took that kid's ice cream, you know, I took money from my mom's wallet when I was seven. I'm not saying I did, but you know, these are things you're not proud of. Or you have certain kind of parts, like say for example, within a group like this, you're going to want to pretend like you're hard working, you're really passionate. But maybe deep and down inside, you just want to watch TV and play video games and eat popcorn. That's okay too. So what we want to do is we want to make sure what we think, what we say, and what we do, I got to get another marker, are in harmony. OK? Because you could talk a good talk. And I'm glad that you guys said what we do. So we strive for harmony. And when you do, when you really gain a sense of self-awareness, that's when you start to put all this stuff together. And so your character is kind of out of balance. So right now, you, you mostly just show people what you do. What's your thought process like? And you have a voice, so start using that. Now, is that the, I'm not sure that's what you wanted to get into when you say talk about character. Because you're talking about passion, right? Yes. And, and how do you demonstrate that you have passion and talent? Because when someone like you, Chris, and you, you've said earlier that you have portfolios coming in from all over the world, literally, right? And, yes. And one of the questions that I always ask questions looking at it is that, how do I know this person actually did this? How much time did, did he or she spend doing this? You know, kind of following up some of the things you're doing in that. And so drilling it down a little deeper with passion, how do you then, so if you show someone, I mean, if, if you see someone work, you know that they're really passionate about it because they show range of the work, right? And, and, and they show range, but it, that, that range also reveals story, a narrative, you know, the process. That's passion. You know, yeah. and, and that's, very, that's very literal, right? But I guess that could, I don't know if that really translates into being character being from a business owner, right, and running a studio. Bottom line is that you have to have a certain individual. It's like, for example, it's like creating a sports team. I, when I create something, I would love to create a sports team. I'm a thing, a coach, you know, because why? Those pieces need to fit together to do certain objectives, right? And so character plays a big role because sometimes as a team, you may have to lead a team, right? Or sometimes you have to take a back seat. Let the others move forward with that, right? right. So that's mentorship, that's coaching, that's evolving and constantly. So character plays a big role in the context of you know, what we're trying to do, right? And from a studio owner. So the companies and, and businesses, they talk about brand attributes, right? Does the brand attribute, right? Does it, does it align with your personal brand, which is character, right? As you develop your personal brand, how do you reveal, how do you demonstrate your character? Because in the core of all the thing is that we're dealing with human beings, it's about the character issues. If you work with an individual with very strong character, you could build something from that, I believe. Right? You're saying a whole bunch of different things. That was good. You know, as, as, as a professor, that's, that's what I do. I, I, we try to do a whole bunch of stuff, right? Yeah, so I'm trying to figure out how to wrangle all the different parts that you brought up on very good things that you're talking about, Dave, and how we can talk about that in a way that we can understand. The first thing that you were talking about a little bit was the depth of exploration, showing your passion. Now, if you guys haven't done so, I would love for you to go watch this episode, 
when one of my designers, she still works here today, her name is Min, and she did these layouts for a magazine that we're working on. And people on the internet were freaking out. They are just saying like, how much time did you give Min to do this? How much time? And they cannot believe the amount of work that she did in the amount of time that I said. Now, I wasn't literally like clocking her every time she worked on it, but I know the project span was about two weeks. And she probably did something like 35 different covers. Not iterations, but different covers. And then I haven't even shown the people on the internet how many different layouts and spreads that she did. She probably did at least five complete spreads of probably four to six pages each for every design that she came up with. And then we went into the iteration mode when we we're like really refining. Then we went deep again. And so this is what I'm saying, like you guys, when you have 10 weeks to work on a project and you come up with one logo and one application, that's, in my opinion, kind of sad. Maybe design isn't for you. That's my thought there. So that's just about proof of your passion, and that's, that's what we're talking about, right? The other part you were saying is like, and a, and a brand has all these attributes. Now we, we know this, you guys. Brands say all sorts of things that make all kinds of promises. But when what they do is in alignment with what they say, it's kind of disconnected and it's inauthentic. That's the biggest problem there. So you guys understand that? Like there's a big thing that's going on right now with United Airlines. What's going on with United Airlines? <laughs> right, literally grabbing somebody and bloody face, pull somebody off. Well, that's what they do. And what you do says more about what you think. And I heard on the radio today on the, on the way over, that their stock dropped 4%. That is about $800 million problem that got going on. And I think that's just the tip of the iceberg. See, the, unlike lots of things, we have a lot of choices that we can make. We can choose to fly in different airlines. And I'm not advocating you do one thing or the other, but you're gonna act to your conscience, right? Your conscience is gonna tell you, do I believe in what they believe in? And that seems so weird. I don't know much, many details about this thing, but just to pull a person out of random who didn't want to leave. And to use that kind of force, it's disproportionate to me. I don't understand that at all. And in this day and age with that many cell phones, smartphones, oh boy, that is a disaster. So who knows what kind of impact, long-term, short-term impact it's gonna have. So what do you think, say, and do? They have to be in alignment there. And Without turning into this long psychological probe, uh, I think Dave mentioned one other thing. Do you guys remember what the third thing was? I should have written it all down. It was pretty deep. And this is not a choreographed thing that Dave and I had planned ahead of time to beat you guys down. This is not like the season finale of The Walking Dead last season where there's like a dead body on the floor and we just don't know what happened. Um, yeah. He said he talked about like Oh, yeah, 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 thank you very much. I did write that down. Oh, Boom, right there, it says teamwork. <laughs> Somebody's paying attention. But uh, knowing when to like, take the back seat also. Knowing when to take a back seat. I'm not sure this is uh, in relationship to, to character per se, but there is team dynamics for sure. When you have a bunch of individuals, then they have individual goals. They have yet to find and define a common purpose. When you have a common purpose, you can work towards that goal. So right now, if you guys have ever done a group project, it's a total cluster F. Everybody wants to do what they want to do, and kind of rightfully so, because at the end of the day, you need to take care of number one in the sense that you need to walk away with something that's going to get you a job. So we can't always align with the people that we're working with, because sometimes we're assigned teammates that don't share the values that we share, that don't want to achieve the same thing. And oftentimes, team dynamics break down when one or two people wind up doing the work of the remaining five team members. Because there are people who want to lead and there are other people who are just content writing their coattails. That's a real problem. I think in the sense of a teamwork, I think it would be better to have clearly defined strengths of each person. You don't necessarily want to have two writers, two logo designers, all in the same group. You want to program for diversity, personality styles, that kind of thing. You don't want two alphas in the same group. It doesn't work well, okay? So, and then you could change the role. You can say, okay, so we have clearly assigned roles and we'll flip them so everybody gets a chance to try different roles. But that's a really, really tough thing.